Hi, I'm Nick, and welcome to my channel. For the longest time, I've been using the N Pro 2, and I loved it. it. Served its purpose over the years, and I got very attached to it. Even though it comes soldered with Cherry MX Browns, I got used to the ticklish tactility. In between, I have a Tacware Phantom, but let's not talk about that. It's a really long story. I was not completely oblivious to custom mechanical keyboards. However, it did cost a lot and it took some time for me to really sink in. But thanks to YouTube and thanks to glasses for getting me into this hobby, I am now burning a hole in my pocket. For now, let's get to the bill. I went online to scout around. I made a list of things I wanted in a keyboard. Switches, case, keycaps, and foams. And I was looking for something affordable, but not that cheap. And what do you know? I settled for a case called Kwe 60 by a vendor called PCB Malaysia. The case looks delicious like Kui, but I don't recommend biting into this thing unless you're the type who eat nails for breakfast or you're probably well prepared to have your teeth all over the table. The case is relatively cheap, coming at just under $45 US or 199 ringgit. At the time of purchase, it came with a free aluminium plate but I'm going to be using a polycarbonate plate instead. Not just because it makes the keyboard sound thockier, but it actually helps muffles the sound as this case is really, really pingy. Perhaps in the previous life, it may have been a bell. I don't know, but it's a really pingy case. It weighs approximately 700 grams, not too heavy, but kind of hefty. Is it anodized? Yes, even though it's shipped with a heavy coat of paint. For the switches, I'm going to be rolling with the KTT Matcha switches. These are tactiles. I've taken the time to loop and film these switches. No, I'm not pro tactile. I actually have a preference for certain linears too. I have tried some of the KTT collections and they do not disappoint. They are pretty affordable and easy to get online at only 38 cents US or 1 ringgit and 70 cents a piece cheap. For the lube, I went with the Cryotox 205 Grade Zero. These are for the switches. And for the springs, I went with the GPL 105 Grade Zero. For the plate, I went with the polycarbonate plate, or PC plate for shorts. It's flexible, and since this was my first bill, I realized that it sits on the plate foam, and it's not meant to be screwed in. Though, I could be wrong, but keep watching 
as it worked out in the end. The plate comes in at a cost of $9 US or 40 ringgit. For the plate foam, I went with Polron foam. This acts as a buffer between the plate and the PCB. Previously, off-camera, I tried the PE foam mod while experimenting with the build. That was when I found out that the ping on the case was very noticeable. So I added another layer of PE foam and it barely made a difference. I tried tape modding the PCB and it sounded like I was typing in a cave. I tried tape modding the foam but that didn't work out either. So I went with the next best thing, butyl. Butyl? I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Let me know down in the comments below. This sheet of heavy goodness has a sticky layer at the bottom. After carefully reviewing this thing, I found that the top layer is conductive and this is hazardous to the PCB. So I decided to tape the sheet with masking tape. Two layers to be safe and made sure to cover every inch of it so it doesn't make contact with the PCB. I cut it down to size as the sheet fits just nicely below the screw poles in this case. This means that I have about one millimeter clearance between the PCB and the butyl sheet.
for the PCB, I went with the OM64 Pro. It's not as famous as the GK64, DZ60, and such, but it comes in at $26 US or 115 ringgit. The board is compatible with QMK and VIA, and the RGB on this thing looks absolutely stunning. Sadly though, it did not ship with a manual, but as I was connecting my Bluetooth speaker to my computer, the board appeared on my list of Bluetooth devices. Another plus point there. The board also uses screw mounted stabilizers. So I went and got myself a set of Duroc V2s. These tabs were not cheap, coming in at $12.35 US or 55 ringgit. But as for the board, in my opinion, this is the best bang for the buck PCB on the market, hands down. I took the time to balance the wires on the back of my iPhone. Watching Wildcat's channel for hours, I got the hang of it eventually. The goal is to make sure that the wires don't bounce off each end on a flat surface. Below the steps are Polaron sheets covered in dielectric grease to help dampen the strokes of the stabilizers stems on the PCB. I've actually watched really helpful videos on this thanks to Teha types and Hippio tech.
The mistakes I made here was over lubing the right step of the left shift and the enter step wire was not balanced enough. This resulted in a mushy feeling and it didn't sit right with me. So I had to make the adjustments off camera. I did the best I could, but hey, this was my first custom keyboard. Let me know down in the comments how did your first build go. I'm curious to know what it was like for you to build your first custom keyboard. This case was not perfect. Halfway through fitting the PCB, the notch on the top right was shorter than the left side. So I cut a bit of the butyl sheet and stuck it in place. I will be fitting silicon o-rings under the PCB where the screws go through to act as a dampener between the PCB and the case itself. I found this tip thanks to Scott from Keyboard. Check out his channel. Scott's channel is helpful. He explains the acoustics of each foam material. The purpose of mods and why each layer of materials contributes to the sound. But in my situation, I had to do everything I can to remove the pings coming from this case. But if you are going to be following my steps, please take it with a grain of salt and some pepper, maybe.
for some people, lubing and or filming switches feels like pain and an endless agony of spiraling into the abyss as time goes by. Not gonna lie, I felt the same at first. It turned out to be very calming, especially during rainy, boring days and times when you just want to sit down, listen to some music, or even keep up with your favorite anime. I guess I'm one of those who enjoy lubing switches, but that doesn't make me a masochist. No, no. Now for the keycaps. I went with the iFace Roam Team SA profiles because I like the height of this profile. It may be uncomfortable to some, but hey, it's all about preference, right? I bought these keycaps on Keeps Project, coming in at $33.50 US or 149 ringgit. Even being clones, the legends on the caps are quite clear and comfortable to look at. These caps are double shot and are quite heavy. According to the store's description of the caps, they are made from 80% ABS and 20% PBT. Now, I don't exactly have deep pockets for GMKs, but for now, these will have to do. Okay already, this is too much science for my brain. So let's get to the sound test.
If you have made it this far in the video, I would just like to say thank you. This is my first tech video. I might do another one as this was an exciting journey. This might not be one of the highest ranking top builds out there. Not even close to what a good board should sound like. But hey, I'm willing to keep trying. And in my next build, I might take apart this N Pro 2 and mod the heck out of it. Until next time, this is Nick. Take care and goodbye.